Hello everybody, thank you for joining us. Today we're going to do a sketch of a rock. And we're going to use pen and ink medium to do it, not a pencil. But we'll start off with a pencil because we want to determine a certain shape for the rock. So as we know, while rocks have, like they have their own characters, but there are the, the randomness of the shape of a rock is what really uh, gives it its uh, uh, true character. Like it's uh, just uh, pretty much always astounding. So bigger rock plays with similarly shaped smaller rock. <clears throat> I think that should like give us enough to work with. And there we have like one, two, and three. So we can do so many different things like with these. Now, we mentioned pen and ink in today's exercise. And that is exactly what we'll do. So ink means that we're, let's say there's a light source right from above. So we can feel free already to put some tones. As soon as I can grab a, marker so let's put in some tones like that very very quickly so like feel like strokes here and of course the ever important shadows now those are not necessarily Part of the exercise but since you know we have like three stones together yeah why not you know just cast a bit of a shadow right under them and we've tried to uh, separate the the tones here between the shadow we've made these shadows with the more uh, intense like fills right there just so we can separate some elements here and now here is where the, the the fun part begins now we have let's say a shape like that and let's give this rock a more streamlined like car like shape and this one like that now there's no specific rule here but we definitely work from the dark tones up and we have to keep in mind that when it's like rocks and we are working with ink we are working in a in a sense that there's like you know for instance, right here, sort of a jagged edge coming here, put in a little cross edge there, put in a little cross edge right here, and everything, absolutely everything has to be very, very subtle. So here, around here, let's say that there's a little like, curvature here instead of you know, just being a sharp cut. So we just work a bit around it.
and we put in, putting in like like random like cross hatches like here and there all through the three uh, pieces here one very important thing that we have to focus on is that if we need to have like a true cross hatch right here we can go like that so that is like a true cross hatch going so intersecting lines and then out of the darker framework just a few more like uh, blending lines I would say would work then as we go upward right here into the again into that uh, smooth uh, curvature here That's like just one way of like doing it, but the ideal way of doing this is having like different shapes, like you know, coming in, for instance, right here. So, another like dimension here, let's say. So thus far we see that with just like a degree of varying lines or so right here if I just go like that and I go in those two directions and then come up with this here <coughs> excuse me I can keep on <coughs> making the layers more complex. So right here, for instance, just adding that. And then going here and coming outward, going that way. Gives that rock here that you know little impression that it has a little extra uh, crack or uh, wedge in there
same story here. So making it work from the dark toward the lighter source. And it looks like like we we'll, we'll, we'll get there. Again, the exercise like it takes time. If it is ink, and of course ink is readily a difficult, more often than not, a more difficult medium to work with when it comes to applying tone. If we had a pencil, we would have been off to the races like long ago with this particular sketch. And then on the top, without making anything too much uh, complex, we just go with a few lines Of course, it all depends on what, again, like what kind of, <coughs> excuse me, it depends on what kind of texture we are trying to, like, you know, put it under here. And we can use a lot of it as, we can leave a lot of it as, like, you know, plain texture. We don't necessarily need to go this route. This was like a fill-in texture and transitional, like, you know, texture. This one here can be more, like, straightforward like that and perhaps like you know flowing and abiding by the crosshatch rules more than the tones we put below here let's make that darker again One important element that we have to remember is what kind of a rock we are actually basing our illustration on. Is it like a limestone? Is it a sedimentary rock? Is it an igneous rock? Like every rock, like rocks can differ. So it's important to also determine if there's any particular kind of rock that we want to base our illustrations on. And then of course in between there are these elements of varying cross hatches that we can use for it. So like right here, it helps like, you know, separate this level from here. And then we can go with like straighter lines, straighter lines again along the shape. It's 
So there we have it. And again, here, I'm just like tempted to put in another tone right there. And then again, level out with some more transitional and fill in crosshatch. Now, this guy here, slightly different exercise. So in this guy here, we just like put in like brush tones first, and then we quickly like, you know, transitioned into like minimal crosshatch. So that's a quick way of doing it. But again, if you want it like super like crosshatched, super inked, you can just keep going, we can keep going adding in like little layers along these lines and making the shape even like more complex, more to attain like, you know, more rock-like appearance. So again, all depending on what we are looking to do, what kind of illustrations we are using this for, or is it just good old fashioned uh, chiseled objects and scraggly objects practice either way it's going to like work so please do try it out uh, thank you very much for watching we put out content generally every day so please subscribe keep in touch and have yourself a wonderful day